Thank Happy you so much. Here. Thank you so much for that. I'm delighted to be here. I'll do a short intro and please uh, correct me anywhere I go wrong. But uh, you are a podcaster, fintech leader and an advocate for positive change. How do these things intersect? Like, who are you? So, so well, my background is actually um, is user experience and design. So I am particularly in financial services. So I spent the last almost 30 years helping uh, banks and insurance companies all around the world uh, develop better customer experiences. And I think um, through that time, I've sort of been an advocate for, for customers and, you know, really looked to kind of champion, you know, what customers see as part of their digital experiences. And I think that that whole kind of journey that I've been on um, has given me a real kind of insight into people and what makes people tick. Um, and I had my own agency and uh, I, I sort of sold that to a bigger company. Um, so I'm very fortunate now to be in a position where I, I can kind of choose to, to look at other things. So, you know, rather than sort of head to the golf course, I've decided to uh, help educate people around fintech. So one of the, the things that is a big bugbear of mine is that um, people talk too much about technology, like fintech is it's not all about technology, it's about people and solving people's problems. And I think I've got an opinion which I can kind of bring to that. But that's led me on to, to, to looking at issues. And I think um, the climate change agenda is a huge issue for us all. I mean, mm. we, we know that and we can kind of talk about that in, in more detail. Um, but I, I, I was really struck a few years ago when I started thinking about, well, what is technology doing about the climate change agenda? And what is the, the, the sort of financial industry doing about that? And how does that all kind of all kind of meet together? Um, and you know, what does that mean to customers and consumers at the end end of the day? And sort of latterly, I've actually become more of a campaigner for mm. clean rivers in this mm. country. And um, you, you know, what I, I found is a is a customer which needs a voice, which is is our river system. So they're in a dire strait. Um, and it's been kind of interesting to, and again, I think we can talk a lot more about this, go beyond just the sort of hand waving mm -hmm. that I sort of see in the, yeah. in the E agenda into actually doing something physical yeah. and tangible. Um, and actually using things like data to start holding um, people or organizations like the water companies and our regulators to account. So all of these things are kind of weaving yeah. together into this yeah. odd story. But, you know, at the end of the day, it's sort of, to me, this is all about people and, and, and the problems that we all face and not burying those problems. Yeah. Uh, it's sort of surfacing those problems and making sure those get addressed, not having bullshit conversations yeah. about technology or, you know, thoughts around the environment. It's, it's about actually identifying the problems and making sure that we can address them. Yeah, and I think that's pretty much why the two of us also have a lot more common maybe than, than you could think. But it's ex exactly the thing that when, when you have done the long journey of being and seeing the banking and finance and then you come to like you really want to have change happening. But please tell me a little bit more about the UK river uh, item. The problem is um, we have abused our waterways. We're over extracting uh, them for, for the water usage. Uh, we're allowing agricultural runoff, um, uh, pollutants from yeah. agriculture to go into the waterways. But also almost every sewage farm in the UK is legally dumping treated sewage, and I'll come back to what that yeah. means, into our waterways, but also legally dumping sewage into the waterways, which has ended up in, I think that the, the, the latest statistic is only 14% of the UK's rivers are ecologically sound. Now, that uh, is a change which has sort of happened over the last, um, I would say, 20 years, yeah. as regulation has kind of been softened. Yeah. Um, uh, the regulators have been defunded, so we don't have enough mm -hmm. eyeballs on the problem. Um, but I think what has then happened is with things like COVID, mm -hmm. people sort of started going, 
swimming in the rivers or stand yes. up paddle and suddenly people are going oh god what am i actually swimming in yeah, yeah, yeah. so suddenly this this issue has kind of really yeah. Yeah. been raised yeah. in the public consciousness yeah. um and you know to, to me it's a disgrace that you know actually we have a private i mean the uk is in a very odd position we have a privatized water company um a, a water uh, 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 all our water companies are privatised yeah. um, and you know what has then happened is we've had investment going into these water companies but then huge amounts of money being extracted from the water companies yeah. so if you can imagine like Thames Water which yeah. is the water company here is basically a monopoly yeah. you know it's a good investment opportunity yeah. because it's got I don't know 15 million yeah, customers yeah. who will never stop paying their bills yeah. because they can't um, but instead of money being invested in our infrastructure, it's gone off to yeah. pay for people's pensions in places like Canada or, you know, investment yeah, yeah, funds yeah. in yeah. Abu Dhabi or whatever yeah. it is. Yeah. Um, so, you know, it's a it's a it's a real problem. And actually, you, you know, one of the things that I've done is I've sort of said I'm enough. So enough. I swim in the rivers yeah. and I've physically seen the result of yeah. all of this sewage uh, and I know people who've been ill. Um, so I've decided to actually work to kind of collect data yeah. so that I can start holding some of these people to account. So if you think about an average person in the UK and listening to this, what can they actually do? What, what can a, a single individual do? Is well, there anything? It, it, absolutely. I think if people are um, realise it's a problem, there's something simple that they can do which is they can uh, there's a, a a few companies which have petitions yeah. which you can sign so yeah. there's a, a river action and yeah. greenpeace both have petitions and those petitions are a way of yeah. letting the um the, letting the people in charge know we we have um your local mp you can write to or you can start doing what i I've, I've been doing which is actually to uh, talk to organisations like Earthwatch Europe yeah. who can provide you with kits so you can actually go, start going and testing your local water. So, you know, we've found actually by um, just physically going and actually yeah. testing water quality, we've been able to um, connect better with our local community, raise awareness yeah. about the problems, uh, but also it's given us a lot more insight as to what's, what's yeah. going on. So. You know, there's, there's, there's sort of simple steps um, that people can do, but there's more complex things that they can do as well, like testing, as I yeah. say. Where, you, where would you want to see stuff when it comes to the rivers, let's say in the next five or ten years? Like, like if you think about the work you're putting in and, and getting people involved, how does that look like in ten years of now, from now? So I, I think in five or ten, we want our rivers in better health. Yes. So someone was telling me... Um, They'd actually been swimming in a lake in Finland and yeah. they said the quality was so good yeah. that you can actually drink the water yes. and, you know, and, yeah. I, and, you know, I think, why not? Rivers represent a, a systemic problem, which yeah. is, it, you know, there isn't enough water for the world's population. Yes. So waterways all around the world are being abused. If we can look after our rivers, it will help us with the mindset of yeah. broader issues like climate change, I yeah. think. So actually returning rivers to good health, yeah. thinking about extraction and, you know, uh, and the use of that water, I think, is something that I would really like to see over the next five or ten years. Yeah, yeah, because I, I also believe strongly that if we look at water, uh, someone told me from an investment side, if you want to invest in something that will yield long term really well, it's water. And when you hear that, it's like, okay, it makes sense. But then on the other hand, this is kind of the problem. So it's really important. What does that actually mean? And yes, I, I, I agree that from a Finnish side, we are fortunate enough that the work that we do, and we have also a lot of uh, people working to make sure that the lakes, as we have thousands, tens, hundreds of thousands. I don't remember if we have 190,000 lakes or something like that. But, you know, we take the sauna and the lakes very, very seriously. And, and I, I have a cottage uh, at uh, Saima, which is one of the bigger lakes, or actually probably the one of the biggest. And it is so that we do all water. The only thing that we don't do is we don't drink the water because we take it from our own well. Yeah. But otherwise, everything when it comes to cleaning and sauna, all of that water comes 
from that lake. And, and I, you, you know, I think it's water is such a precious yeah. re resource. We should we should revere our waterways. Yeah. Um, and you, you know, I think that the, the Finns are very. I think you've you've got in your culture you re kind of have a huge respect for water. Yeah. And I think what we in the UK have kind of lost is that connection. Mm -hmm. But what I'm seeing is that connection being rekindled. Yeah. So you know, the whole the whole scandal around our waterways is is national news. Yeah. Like every day, there's yeah. another thing. Yeah. Like all the media is behind campaigns to clean up our waterways. Because you know, I think there's an intuitive sense in us as 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 a species that actually we need to protect this stuff. Now, I mean, I look at my local river as the River Thames. Yeah. Now, the River Thames is treated so abominably. Yeah. But if you think about the UK, our history is the Thames. Yeah. You know, without the River Thames, yeah. we wouldn't have done anything. You know, we'd be a, you know, a small little island which had never achieved anything. Yeah but because of trade on the Thames yeah. and the history on the Thames. And you just go, as I say, we should be revering these waterways and really thinking about what we do. And, and if we, again, just pollution and sewage aside, yes. you know, London is literally days away of, from running out of water. Like last year where we had a drought, yeah. we were days away from uh, actually just running out of water in the capital. And I think, you know, you, it, it, that's where this sort of water and climate change are very interconnected. Yeah. So we've got to fix water, but that feeds into this broader story of climate yeah. change. Yeah, yeah. And definitely, if you look at the reasons why it is so polluted, of course, that comes back to, as you said, agricultural items, etc., etc. So really understanding what causes it. So this is a very uh, clear problem. And I think that's the, the sad part, but the good part is also that now people can actually join in and do something. Because like here, we are in London today, it's like I left Helsinki, it was 9 degrees, I'm here, it's like 30, okay, in the sauna it's even hotter. But that's normal, <laughs> but it's like the, the climate isn't getting easier. So as you say, water is a scarce resource, it's going to get even harder. And if you don't have clean water, that's going to be a massive problem. Yeah, uh, look, I think yeah. it's it's a fascinating conversation yeah. and it's, it's not, go you know, there's... This is going to be the conversation of the next 10, 20 yeah. years, you know, yeah. so. But thank you so much for joining into the sauna. And next time we'll take off a little bit more clothes and yeah, eventually absolutely. we'll go swimming in the pure Thames. Very cool. Kitos. Kitos really, yeah. really appreciate it. Thank you for coming.